You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. De Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sei la luce de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu sei le volte de l'amour. You are a You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God 
You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu sei la luce di Dio. I hold you in my heart. Tu sei il volto dell'amore. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face you of God. Good morning, and welcome to Spiritual Life Center, a church that love is building. Holy, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I 
can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. Dear God, we come together open and receptive to your universal energy of good, desiring your love and joy and peace within our lives, grateful that you are actively at work in our lives. Guide us, empower us, loving spirit, to follow your will and your way in discovering for ourselves your universal principles and applying these in our lives. Gratefully, we embrace your truth that sets us free in the name and through the power and in the nature of the Christ spirit that lives within each one of us. Amen. O Lord of light, of form and hue, who has created all things new, create in me from shapeless clay an instrument on which you play. God of the dance that planets tread, who walks beside and soars ahead, oh let me move to worship thee. Come Holy Spirit, dance with me. God of the living word, poet of time, teach me your words in your cadence and rhyme. O Lord of beauty, Lord of art, who gives us soul for every heart. Carve out my life, reshape and mold, and be the artist of my soul. Teach me your words in your cadence, and gives us soul for every heart. Carve out my life, reshape and mold, and be the artist of my soul. Carve out my life, reshape and mold, and be the artist of my This is our time, the time we set aside to partner with our God, our creator, our mentor, our guide and our teacher. How often have we asked ourselves the question, what is my purpose? Where is my right place? Why do I hide the real me? Where is my joy? What has happened to my spirit? I really want to be free. These are the questions that are answered each day when I trust in you, God, to show me the way. It is in that precious place in me that I feel your presence, your sweetness, and your power. I come to you now to listen with my spiritual ears, to become more aware of your presence, 
you are my creator. You have made me in your image and likeness, a being of light and love. You are my mentor. You have sent your son to be my way shower, one who has walked through his own darkness and into the light of your wisdom and power. You are my guide and my teacher who is willing to lead me every step of the way to become the master of my feelings and emotions and whose joy can overcome and overshadow any challenges that I may have. It is in following you, in trusting you, my God, that I am set free. I invite you to join me now for a moment as we close our eyes and keep our minds and hearts open and responsive to that divine spirit, that Christ love within us all. And we do this now in the silence. If you would just touch your heart for a moment and silently affirm Christ in me and take a moment to ponder that great truth, Christ alive, growing, guiding, prospering and healing and strengthening me. Not my human ego, but Christ in me is my glory. So for a moment, I invite you to join us as we surrender our personality into the service of the Christ, not to destroy it, but to surrender it into the service of the living Christ spirit in us. We invite this Christ spirit to illumine every thought we think, to inspire every word that we speak, to direct every action that we take. We ask the Christ spirit within us to remind us of the compassionate heart within each one of us, a heart for love alone, a heart in service to the divine in all, a heart so pure that it stands in each of the moments of our lives and merely radiates the truth, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Together we dedicate everything we are and everything this spiritual community does to the presence and power and purpose of the living Christ spirit. And every day I'm coming to know at greater and greater depth that there is a, a song in my heart and that I have music in me. And that music is my life, mine and mine alone. I have a covenant with you, God, and I give thanks I will live my life the best I can to reflect the joy and the love of God in all things. I will remember who my soul wants me to be, what my soul wants me to do. In my heart is a sacred space where I am safe and secure. Now in my heart I can sing, now I can be anything. I have no limits, I am free. I feel myself being lifted up for it's a new day. Every day brings an opportunity to be a new me, a free spirit, an opening for the spirit of love to flow through me and out into the world. And I thank you, God. I thank you for every opportunity I'm given to be a blessing. Thank you for the peaceful presence in my world. Thank you for my increased ability to accept what is without asking why as I continue to live my life for your greater honor and glory. And so it is. And now, if you'll join me as we sing and pray the Lord's Prayer. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come Thy will be done On earth as it is In heaven Give us this day Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power This is the moment, this is the day, when I send all my doubts and demons on their way. Every endeavor I have made ever is coming into play, is here and now, today. This is the moment, this is the time When the momentum and the moment are in rhyme Give me this moment, this precious chance I'll gather up my past and make some sense at last This is the moment when all I've done All of the dreaming, scheming and screaming become one This is the day, see it sparkle and shine When all I've lived for becomes mine For all these years I face the world alone and now the time has come to prove to them I've made it on my own. This is the moment, my final test. Destiny beckoned, I never reckoned a second best. I won't look down. I must not fall. This is the moment, the sweetest moment of them all. This is the moment, damn all the odds. This day and always, I'll sit forever with my God. When I look back, I will always recall moment for moment this was the moment the greatest moment of them all Nancy Ingalls thank you so much for your beautiful singing are you aware that you can always move up to a higher experience? That you can move from fear to serenity, from insecurity to abundance, from worry to joy? This requires of you just one thing. And this one thing is the focus of one of my favorite Bible passages. Back when Lenore and I were pioneering a new church in Austin, Texas, after five years, the congregation had grown and we needed a larger place. 
the people decided that we should acquire land and build a new facility. The weekend before carpeting was to be laid in the new sanctuary, we invited everyone to come and use a felt pen to write on the concrete their favorite Bible passage. Thus, symbolically, throughout the life of the church, we would be literally walking upon the Word of God. Lenore's choice was Matthew 19, 26, with God all things are possible, also one of my favorites, but I selected Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge God and God will make straight your path. Let's take a look at this line by line. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Your heart stands for your experience. Yes, you can intellectually explain yourself, but it's your experience that leads you to trust. And the second line, lean not on your own understanding. It's so tempting to lean on your own understanding, but remember, wherever you are in your life, when you need an expert, call on one. And there is no greater expert than God. Third line. In all your ways, acknowledge God. In all your ways, don't limit it to certain areas of your life. Some persons might say, in my personal life, I'll trust God, but in my business, I know what I'm doing. No, no, don't limit yourself. Allow God to take over in every single area of your life. And then the final line, and God will make straight your path. God will guide your way. I can't tell you the ways God leads me, reminds me, directs me. God never lets me down. Remember, it's not about leading a perfect life where no problems arise. Because Jesus said, you, you will have tribulation. We know this will be so. A Course in Miracles speaks in numerous places to the importance of trusting God. For example, chapter four of the text states, you have very little trust in me as yet, but it will increase as you turn more and more often to me instead of to your ego for guidance. Have you not found this to be true? Most of us, demonstrate a trust for life that is as varied as our trust of other people. We trust some people and don't trust others. And in the same manner, we trust life at times and, and not at other times. The greatest challenge for most of us is to learn to trust life, meaning learn to trust God. And yet, in terms of evidencing trust, the human perspective often seems tentative and shallow. In life, our capacity to trust and be trusted is always being tested. A woman in need learned to not always trust the advice you get from authorities. She called the police station to report a skunk in her cellar. The police told the woman to make a trail of breadcrumbs from the basement to the yard and to wait for the skunk to follow it outside. A little later, the woman called back and said, I did what you told me. Now I've got two skunks in my cellar. <laughs> and in another story, a young man accompanied his class on a field trip to the local FBI office. While there, they were shown pictures of the 10 most wanted criminals. The boy looked so puzzled that the agent stopped his presentation and said, is there something you don't understand? The young man said, yes, I, I don't get it. If you wanted them all so much, why didn't you just keep them after you took their pictures? 
Most of us readily accept the reality of a divine intelligence, a higher power, universal force by which planets rotate in perfect orbit, salmon know to return to their exact place of birth, butterflies in the spring instinctively come back more than a thousand miles to the precise location their predecessors left the prior fall. A seed put in the soil knows exactly what to sprout into being. So does it not make sense that the power which formed and shaped the universe can form and shape your life? We know there is universal order and harmony to all of life around us. But sometimes we have difficulty accepting that this intelligence also has the power and wisdom to provide the right outcomes for our lives and the guidance that will bring us to that point. That it can and will move us forward into something better, something greater, bringing together people, places, and situations to support us, assist us, provide for us. You see, everything that happens is caused by God and humans working together. And we know God operates perfectly. So imperfect outcomes must result from human shortfalls. Yet when results that arise don't please us, we say and do the darndest things to make ourselves look okay and seem okay. A powerful quote from a source unknown to me states, God does not ask us about our ability, but only about our availability. And then as we prove our dependability, God will increase our capability. For this to happen, each of us must learn to trust God. And this requires that you first remove anything blocking that trust, such as fear, doubt, resentment, and false beliefs of personal independence that may have you pridefully declaring you don't need God or anything outside of yourself. Only after you rid yourself of these blocks are you ready to pursue further action to establish your own trust of God. And this comes about through three concrete steps. First, set your intent to trust God in every area of your life. That means your health and well-being physically, mentally, and emotionally. It means your financial security and your relationships, both those of your personal world and those with the broader world around you. Second, accept the truth that you are on this earth to complete a transition from your personal self that only deals with outer things, external things, material things, to a state of consciousness where your primary focus is on innermost thoughts and feelings that then reflect in your outer behavior. Third, when an issue arises and your practice has been to assume a feeling of frustration, of despair, of oh no, instead begin the practice of simply saying, God, this is yours to deal with. Please guide me to what is mine to be and to do to resolve this. Then relax and go about your life, not concerning yourself with the issue, but following God's guidance as you are led to do so. And you can test whether you have done this successfully by asking yourself, am I living a life of peace and harmony and tranquility? The answer will be clear. There are a number of practical things we can do to deepen our trust in God. First, 
We can shift our perception of God. Instead of seeing God as a resource we call upon as our needs arise, we let God be God, meaning we place God in charge and are willing to follow God's lead. It has been said, if God is your co-pilot, change seats. Second, utilize the trade up practice. By that I mean, examine what you are feeling or experiencing right now and identify what you would like to be feeling or experiencing. Call upon God to bring this about. God, take away this fear and in its place, bring me an experience of faith in you. Now, this sounds too simple to work, but it actually does work. Test it out for yourself and you'll see that it does. Next, identify some of your favorite Bible passages and recall these as needed. I will restore for you the years the locust has, has eaten. God goes before you and makes the crooked way straight. You are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. Embrace these as the occasion arises. Remember, we all falter. It is how we respond to the difficulty that makes all the difference. Next. Look for opportunities to network. It's amazing how this can work. I happened to be in the fitness center where we live and met an African-American man who is delightful. Soon after, we attended a concert where he sang a solo demonstrating an amazing voice. When I later asked, he was happy to sing a cappella in one of our Sunday services. God finds so many ways to bring people together. And then always be a person of service. Live on the lookout for opportunities to be a, a blessing in one way or another. If you find yourself unable to actively assist others, you can always pray for others, supporting them mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Remember, you are God's beloved in whom God is well pleased. And you honor God by demonstrating your trust in turning over to God everything that comes your way. I love this true story. A tall, young Army lieutenant waited in Grand Central Station for the woman who had filled such a special place in his life. A woman he had never seen, yet whose written words had sustained him continually that past year she would be wearing a red rose. In one of his letters, he confessed to her that in the midst of war, he often felt fear. And she answered, of course you fear. All brave men do. Didn't King David know fear? That's why he wrote the 23rd Psalm. Now he was going to hear her real voice. His mind went back to the book God must have placed in his hands. Out of thousands of books donated to an army training camp, throughout the book, written in the margin, were sensitive, tender comments. Inside the cover had been her name, Hollis Nymel. And he had gotten hold of a New York phone book and found her address. He had written and she had answered. And now he believed he loved her and that she loved him. But she had refused all his pleas to send him her photograph. That concerned him. But she had explained, if your feeling for me has any honest basis, what I look like won't matter. A young woman was coming toward him. Her figure was slim. She was truly lovely with blonde hair and long curls, eyes blue as flowers. In her pale green suit, she was like springtime, come alive. He started toward her, then noticed she was wearing no rose. And as, as he moved, 
A provocative smile filled her face. And then he moved a step closer to her, but there was Hollis Nymel, standing almost directly behind the girl, a woman well past 40, graying hair under a worn hat, more than plump, thick ankle feet, but she wore a red rose in the rumpled lapel of her brown coat. The woman in the green suit was walking quickly away. The lieutenant felt as though he were being split in two. So keen was his desire to follow the young woman, yet so deep was his longing for the woman whose spirit had upheld his own, and there, there she stood. Her pale, plump face was gentle and sensible. Her gray eyes had a warm, kindly twinkle. He did not hesitate. This would not be love, but something very precious, a friendship for which he had been and would be forever grateful. Despite feeling shocked by his disappointment, he said, I'm Lieutenant John Blanford. You are Miss Nymel. I'm so glad you could meet me. May I take you to dinner? The woman smiled. I don't know what this is all about, son. That young woman in the green suit, the one who just went away, asked me to wear this rose on my coat. And she said that if you asked me to go out with her, with, if you ask me to go out with you, I should tell you she's waiting for you in that restaurant across the street. It was an interesting test of character, which he passed with flying colors. When we hear trust in the Lord, it helps to see the word Lord in a new way. Many persons still have an old religious concept of Lord that would have us groveling before a being with human characteristics that we call Lord. Some very good persons have had this false picture imprinted on their mind by misguided religious teaching. The word Lord refers not to a person or being, but rather to a law. The Lord is a spiritual law of good that is within each person. Lord stands for the law of your highest good. When you are serving the law of your highest good, you are also serving the law of every other person's highest good. When you trust in the Lord, you trust that God serves the highest good of all. We can, each one of us, be certain that we have a divine mission, a spiritual purpose. And this might be entirely different from any human purpose we've identified or defined, because our divine mission is monitored by our host, God. Our divine mission includes trusting that God is guiding us to our right place no matter what this might look like at any time. As a result, there is no such thing as a small task. If this is the task I'm supposed to take on, there is no such thing as an insignificant purpose. If this is the purpose I am intended to follow, because God knows that which will benefit us and move us to a higher place of soul unfoldment. We are grateful for the music of our own Eli Santa Maria providing us this beautiful song.
thank you, Eli Santa Maria, for your beautiful music. That was lovely. We are pleased that each of you could join us for this morning's service, and we invite you now to join in our prayer of sharing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And we ask that you support Spiritual Life Center with a donation to this ministry. There are four ways that you can do so. The first is online through our secure website, www.slctroy.com forward slash give. The second is to mail a check to Spiritual Life Center 41340 Fox Run Road number 106, Novi, Michigan, 48377. A third way is to call my cell, 248-925-6214, with credit card information that you provide me directly for a one-time charge. A fourth way is to go to the weekly fr Friday email that you receive, and in there you'll see in a couple of places, donate online or donate now. And if you just click on there, it will be obvious how to make your donation. We welcome anyone who is joining us for one of your first times, and we invite you to join our email list by visiting our website, www.slctroy.com. And up in the right corner, you'll see join email list. If you just click on that, you'll see a place where you can insert your name, your email address, and we will see that every Friday morning, you receive a, our weekly email that provides you a link for the upcoming Sunday service, as well as a link for any classes that are about to be provided. And we'll bring you up to date on all the activities of the church. If you have a prayer request, send these to Ronald F. Scott at gmail.com. And we will send these on to our prayer team of more than 30 powerful members who are praying for you every day. In addition, we will forward these on to Silent Unity where they are prayed over at Unity Village for 30 days. Or you may call Silent Unity yourself 24 seven and pray directly with a prayer chaplain. Their number is 1-800-NOW-PRAY. Next Sunday, Reverend Anita provides another of her powerful messages. Lenore's class from 1987 on personal inventory is on Tuesdays during October at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can watch the class of this past Tuesday by going into the link in your Friday email. It's right there in YouTube. You may also experience the class this coming Tuesday, October 11th. And once again, the link is in your Friday email. This particular one upcoming is extra special because she is introduced by Reverend Jack Olin, our dear friend and mentor. You received an email earlier this week about our upcoming fabulous Christmas party, which will, will be Saturday, December 3rd at the Management Education Center in Troy sure to be a wonderful time of all of us coming together. Great music, great food, great entertainment. It'll just be wonderful to be together. Be sure to RSVP that you're coming so we can send you your food choices in the coming weeks. Immediately following the end of today's service, everyone is invited to join us on Zoom for a time of social connection. The link was in your Friday email. But first, let's join together in our peace song and benediction. God bless. Let there be peace on earth and let 
As you go forth, know that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The power of God protects you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The presence of God watches over you. The Lord lift up Continents upon thee and grant thee peace. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. Amen. Go your way rejoicing. All is truly well.